Let us stand up and begin to appreciate God for all that he has done for, the, for, done for us for the past week. Let's give him the glory, give him the honor, give him the adoration. Our God is worthy. We are here again, full with health and strength. It's not by our power, it's not by our minds. Let's open our mouths and appreciate God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you. We bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Thank you, Father God, for the life you have given to us. Thank you, Almighty God, for counting us worthy to be alive today. Father God, we say we thank you. Our God, we are forever grateful to you. There is no like you, King of Kings, none that can be compared unto your majesty. Our Father God will worship you. Our Father God will bless you. We give you the praise. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you because you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, Father God. You alone is worthy of our praise. Our Father God will say we praise you. We praise you this morning. 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 We praise you. We praise you, our King. We praise you, our God. We praise you, the Almighty God. We praise you. 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 We praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you. The everlasting God, we praise you. The almighty God, we praise you. We praise you, our God. 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 We praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise. At this time, let us come before him with a repentant heart. In any way we might have sinned against him, let's ask for forgiveness. Let's ask for his mercy in Jesus' name. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, and so my God, we come before thee with a repentant heart. Father God, we say we are sorry in any way we might have sinned against you through our thoughts, our action, our character. Father God, we say we are sorry. Daddy, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy, Daddy. Have mercy upon us, God of creation. Let your mercy... Oh, yes, let your mercy rule over our judgment in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Daddy, have mercy. Daddy, have mercy. Thank you, Father God, for your mercy upon our life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us open our mouth and begin to take authority over this service. Take it out of the hand of man and put it in the hand of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over this service this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take authority over this atmosphere. And take authority over this environment in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will take this service out of the hand of man and will put this service in, into your hand. Mighty God, we put this service into your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we put this service into your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let at this time begin to take authority, begin to burn and destroy every walls of darkness against this service in Jesus' name. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, we pound that will destroy every force of darkness against this service in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, For this purpose, what the Son of God may manifest that he might destroy the walls of darkness. We destroy every walls of darkness against this service this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We put on not every walls of the wicked on against this service in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us op declare this, uh, the heavens over this service open in Jesus' name. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare the heavens over this service open in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare that the heavens over this service is open. The heavens over this service is open. It's open. It's open. It's open. It's open. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And so our Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Thank you, Almighty God, because you are here in our midst this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us open our mouth and begin to worship. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. We welcome the Spirit of God into our midst. We welcome the Spirit of the Living God. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, our Father and our Lord. We welcome you, we welcome you. Come and take your place in our midst this morning. Come and take our place in our midst this morning. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, 
Thank you for saving me. Thank you, you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you for saving me. 
sometimes given and on power and might be on to the love forever and ever amen power and might be on to the
Jesus, hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Let me hear the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue to give God thanks and praise. Let us lift up our voice to say thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. This is the last Sunday of the month. You know what God did for you. Just give him thanks personally. Just give him thanks. From where he brought us from to now. Let us continue to bless the name of the Lord. Let's continue to worship him as we join in the hymn 1027, a shelter in the time of storm. Hallelujah. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill beside. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foe affright. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock. Hallelujah. Amen. If Jesus is your rock, shout hallelujah. 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 Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is a rock. Amen. No matter what storm we're going through, Jesus is the rock. Amen. No matter what situation we're going through, Jesus is the rock. Amen. When the enemy come, know them, Jesus is the rock. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We will lift up our voice this morning. We'll praise the Lord, King of kings and lords of lords. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Time of storm, be thou. 
all be blessed. Let us pray. Father Lord, once again, we have every reason to thank you for your prevailing hand that has brought us so far. I serve our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to equally thank you for the hand of God upon this mountain. We see the manifestation of your power and your glory on every services. Accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children that are coming to honor you this morning with their testimony, Father Lord, honor them. In the mighty name of Jesus, may their testimony to be permanent. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' powerful name we pray. If you are testifying this morning, kindly come to this side of the church so that we can uh, save time. Number one testifier. Praise the Lord, saints. My name is Sister Wendy. First testimony for November to this current month, I've been encountering a major problem in my dwelling where the heat was so hot no one is there. Someone came to fix it, but they didn't actually fix it. So sometimes before I get to church, I had to change a second garment because it was so hot in the house. So on Wednesday, I decided to say, I know I'm not a slave because my father is a king. So I bent down and I prayed and I got on my stomach and I tell God, I curse whoever or whatever want me to suffer in this heat. And after I did that that day, the next day I called the office, office management. And when I called, the right person called me back. And saints of God, guess what God do? God show up with favor. And the person apologized. Not only did it get fixed, but it gave me a whopping discount of my next rent. And to make, because I, I, this is going to be too continued, but at the last but not least, I want to say I thank God that I was able to celebrate another birthday yesterday. Favor cover me, 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 blessings. We cover your testimony with the blood of Jesus. Number two, testifier. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my name is Nelson. I'm here to give God glory. Uh, January come past, February come past, we are in March, and uh, today is the last Sunday of this month. I'm thanking God for sparing my life, my wife, my children, my mother-in-law, my parents, everyone. They are doing good, they are doing great, and we are thanking God for this blessing that money cannot buy. And uh, also thanking God, for, uh, yesterday I traveled, let me know, uh, I, I mean I went to South Jersey. So I was there for a while, I know it was raining, but coming back, it was around the... Uh, 8.30, so I got to New York around 10.14 p.m. So when I exit on the uh, New Jersey Turnpike, my car suddenly make a U-turn. And you know that road is very busy. Like, you got trailer, you got every vehicle coming. So I left my own lane, went to that lane. So struggling to get it back on track. Okay, I thought I got it. Then you make another U-turn again. Then at this junction, I was so nervous. I said, you know what? Let me just try to. I just, God help me. I struggle, I put it back on track. When I look back, I didn't see any car coming. I look front, no any car. And after I passed through the toe, I saw trailers, everyone just popping in. And I'm thanking God like, you know, God has saved me because I, can, I won't be able to explain this. And I praise you for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The plan and the purpose of the enemy over your life has been canceled. In the mighty name of Jesus. Third testifier. Jesus. My name is Elizabeth. I'm so happy to stand in the presence of the children of God and in the presence of God to testify what God has done for me for, let me say, 40 something years. I'm giving praise to God concerning my four children, two children, two grandchildren who had their birthday this March. The other one, praise God. The other one, 1047, on the 4th of March. Then the other one, that's the baby of the house, 
1041 on the 22nd of March. Then her daughter, who is here with me, turned 21 on the 6th of March. Then the other small one turned three on the, on the, on the 4th of March. So God loved me so much. He loved me so much. In the house there, I have much, but me, I don't have my own February. So I'm, they treat me. Everybody has partner, but I don't have partner. So I thank God so much. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday to the children. We thank God for that. The next testifier, number four testifier. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is uh, Brother Isaac. I have uh, many testimonies to give. But because of time, I will give only one for now. And that testimony is uh, thanking God for adding another year to my age. Happy birthday to you, sir. We thank God for that testimony. Number five, testifier. Good morning, brethren and sisters. Uh, I'm thank my name is Sister Eunice. I'm thanking God today for his wonders over my family. Uh, two Tuesdays ago, something happened. My husband had a panic attack at the funeral home. And I thank all those who were surrounding and helping. So I praise God that God did not let put us to shame. And then I'm thanking God for my son who went to the military for two years in Italy. He just came back with his friend. Praise God! Hallelujah! Your testimony is permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. And we have our mommy in the house, mommy Akosa. Uh, during the week, she turned 77. Happy birthday to all the people born in March. And that's the end of our testimony this morning. We have every reason to give God the glory. Let us stand up. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great is he has done to the Lord. So our Bible reading will be taken today from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 127. Yes, 127. Are we there? Almost. If you are there, say amen. amen. Oh, Mr. Psalm 127. I read. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked but in vain. Two. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth 
is beloved sleep. Three, lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Four, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Five, in the last verse, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. May Lord bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm no longer a slave to fears, for I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to fears, for I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody, you surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies, oh, till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fears, for I am a child of God. Oh, 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 from my mother's womb, you have chosen me, your love has called my name. I've been born again to your family. Oh, your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drawn in perfect love. You rescue me so I can stand and sing. I am a child of God. Yeah. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drawn in power, Lord. You rescue me so I can stand and see. I am a child of God. I am a child. Of God, I am a child of God. I 
I'm no longer a slave to fears, for I am a child of God. You are no longer slaves to fear, for you are a child of God. We are no longer slaves to fear, for we are children of God. you come on in the room come on in the prayer room the lord jesus he will meet you the holy spirit will greet you find joy unspeakable joy in the room oh just come on in the room well come on in the prayer room the Lord Jesus will meet you. The Holy Spirit will greet you. You find joy in a room. Oh, I remember when I was a child, I was seated on my mother's knees. She shouted, Hallelujah, glory to God. She said, Please, please follow me. Oh, Jesus, 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 Holy Doctor, Holy, Holy, Bible She got all medicine there in the room. Oh, come on in the room. Please come on in the prayer room. The Lord Jesus, He will meet you. The Holy Spirit will creep you. You find joy. Come on in a room, please come on in the prayer room. The Lord Jesus, He will meet you. The Holy Spirit will greet you. You find joy. Can I get a witness? Hey. Oh, just listen and let me tell you what the good Lord has done for me. He took away my sin, washed me clean, and I'm happy as I can be. Oh. Been in the, the Lord has been Pray again I took Jesus For my doctor The Holy Bible For my prescription I got Oh medicine there In the room Oh come in the room Please come on In the prayer room The Lord Jesus Will meet you The Holy Spirit Will greet you you find joy Joy, 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 joy Joy, 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 you find joy, unspeakable joy in the room. I say, oh, just come on in the room. Will you come on in the prayer room? The Lord Jesus will meet you. The Holy Spirit will greet you. You find joy, 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 you find joy, unspeakable joy in the room. Let somebody shout.
shout hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements before we go into the word of God. Amen. By the grace of God, Sunday start it remain same time, 10 a.m. and it will run to 1 p.m. Um, Monday Bible study, same time, 6, 6.30 p.m. to run to 8.30 p.m. It's virtual, so it, everyone is allowed, is able to come in. Even on your way back from work, you can join us. So God bless you as you join in Jesus' name. And on Wednesday, by the grace of God, our man and water service will be holding as usual with our Father in the Lord, the General of us here. Um, thank God for those who came last Wednesday. My prayer is that you will come back again in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And on Thursday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have the breakthrough hour as usual. Don't forget to join. That's virtual. Too. And on Saturday, is what? Power must change hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Make sure you come. And don't forget, it's a fasting program. God bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Our deliverance for the month of April, it's holding on April 20th to April 23rd. I beg you, come, let's pray, and God will do wonders in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a good news. One of our sisters is sharing an information with us. If you are in this service and you don't, you are not, um, you don't have your health insurance, there is an opportunity someone is able to help. Um, Sister Amy, she's just at the back there. Just please see her after the service. She's able to help people who don't have health, health insurance. There's information she can share with you. And there are other benefits that she, you, she can help you to access. God bless you as you see her in Jesus. If you are in that, you need such thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I learned the song. The song tells us that there is joy in where? In the prayer room. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, this is the very last Sunday of the month. How many people recognize that? But the, but the truth is that it's not everybody that started it is seeing this very day. If God has given you the grace to see it, will you rise on your feet? With the joy of the Lord in your heart. Rise up on your feet. And look at the person standing by your side and tell the person God is good to you. Look at another person and tell the person God is good to you. Look at somebody, tell them God has been good to you. God is good to you. Look at them, tell them God is good to you. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them God is good to you. Look at them. Look at them. Tell them God is good to you. God is good to you. Amen. You know one thing? Move from where you are. Go and look for somebody. Say, God is good to you. 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 God is good. It's very good to you. God is 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 good to you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. And now tell yourself, God is good to me. If you are sure, shout it louder than that. God is good to me. 
If it's good to you, lift up your two hands and acknowledge the goodness. Lift up your two hands, acknowledge his goodness. And tell him, you've done me well. You've done me well. You've done me well. He has done me well. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Oh, yeah. What the Lord has done for me, oh, yeah. I cannot tell it all. Oh, yeah.
because of our own we have no power your presence in your life makes us powerful what is man for man to tell the devil shut up if God is not in him but Lord thank you for tabernacle in our lives thank you for dwelling in us Thank you for your grace that has made the difference in every phase of our lives. Amen. Accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the testimony of waking up this morning. Amen. We could raise up our hands. Amen. We open our eyes. Amen. We could open our mouth and what came out. Amen. We will not take all this for granted. Amen. Accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, minister life to us this morning. Amen. Speak to us by yourself. Amen. Educate us by your spirit. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, I want you to pray these specific prayers and pray intentionally. Pray from the depth of your heart and pray intentionally. Say this one with power inside of you. Say any power. On assignment to scatter my life. life. Shouting like a warrior. Any power on to my life. Because every life is designed by God, it has a destination. It has a place where God is expecting it to end. So it's a program. God has a program for any man. But there is there are just as God is interested in him. The devil too is interested in him. There are two hands operating upon the life of man. One hand wants to help him. Another hand wants to damage him. Say, powers! On assignment to scatter my life. Shout it louder than that. Scatter by fire. Open your mouth and declare it. The power on assignment to scatter my life. Let them scatter. Open them out, open them out, open them out. Lekotanda Yabo Shenteraba. Command them to scatter. Open them out. Oh, yes. Let them scatter. Oh, yes. Le robo sokopota ya bo shatana. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm. A man had a dream, a revelation. And in that revelation, he saw two serpents. One serpent was very angry. The other one was friendly. But both are serpents. Then the Lord said to him, the one that is friendly is more dangerous than the one that is angry. 
Say this one loud and clear. Say it with everything inside of you. Say serpent at scorpion. Shout it louder than that. On assignment to damage me. Shout it like Tessionale. Die! Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Let the serpents and scorpion on assignment to damage my life and destiny. Oh, yes. Die in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Le kotana na makopotende lebotaya. In Jesus name we pray. We prayed one prayer here yesterday and we prayed. I said the in a single meeting, I said, pray it at home. Don't stop. Pray. Keep on praying it. Do you know one thing? And as I said yesterday, the first thing a man needs to see is not a wife or a husband. He must see himself first. If you have not seen yourself and you marry, you will confuse the person you marry. You will be a problem. Because you won't value yourself correctly because you haven't seen yourself. Until a man sees himself, he does not have value correctly. He only wants to impress other people with his life. And when you don't know where you are going, others tell you this is where you should go. Here this morning, will you beg God intentionally? Will you beg God? And I'm believing God that by the reason of this prayer, somebody's eyes will open. Yeah. You will not see men like trees again. Yeah. You will see and you will know. Because yeah. it's possible to see men like trees. You're just seeing men like trees. Bible said concerning Jesus, he knew men for who they are. Say this one loud and clear. You know, the car a man is driving, it does not matter if he is blind. He will eventually crash it. But a man who is driving just a bit but can see his way will get to his destination. A blind man driving a rose race is just on his way to perish. Hear this day by the Spirit of God. Whatever is on assignment to keep you blind, let God kill them for your sake. Say any power covering my eyes in the spirit. Shout it louder than that. Say with your shenali. Open your mouth and kill the power. Whatever is covering my eyes and the spirit, let the power perish. Let the power die. Oh, yes. Command the power to die. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last one. He make his angel spirits. His ministers, what did he make them? Flaming fire. And let me tell you something. You don't beg rats not to touch fire. You don't, there are things you won't beg once there is a flame inside of you. Oh, may God find a head this morning Amen. that he can concentrate his fire on. Amen. May you be that person. Amen. 
All the dreams somebody is coming to oppress me down, it's because the place is cold. No matter how mad even a lion is, when he sees fire, he recognizes it. He says, no, 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 don't go there. A lion knows fire. He won't go. No matter how mad or angry the lion, it won't jump into the flame. Say this one as you beg God, this is the final one before you sit down. Say, my father! Set my life on fire! Shout it louder than that! Oh yes! Make it louder than that! Oh yes! In the name of Jesus! Mananata Labo Shapala! Oh, set my life on fire! It is fire that I want! On fire! Open their mouth! 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 Set me ablaze! On fire! Lekate leketemba! Meno poto pala pala tendo Nero saya yeko tele Neke pala mbele kotanda Mana pelo sondo yoko ola Mene naribo soko pola boshe tona nani nara Oh yes Set my life on fire Oh yes Yes Lord in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I'm praying specifically anything collected from the covenant and deposited inside anyone here this morning. The Bible says, He that rolleth a stone, he shall return back to his own head. So let the Lord of the covenant go back to the covenant. Let your amen be louder than that. Let your Emma 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 be louder than that. In the name of Jesus. Ah, ah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And your loudest, Amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Shake the person sitting by your side. Say, welcome to God's presence. Tell the person, God brought you here to bless you. God brought you here to bless you. Amen. There is a vacancy in the spirit this morning. And God is asking for men that will fill that gap for him. I'm speaking briefly and we're going to pray because prayer is needed now more than ever. On Wednesday, this past Wednesday, something happened. I was in the office and my own CCTV camera has been down for a while. So I was just prompted. I called my, media, my tech madam, my tech sister. Please come fix this thing for me. As soon as she fixed it, I could see everybody at the entrance as you are coming in. And not so long after she fixed it, I believe that was why I requested for that thing. God wanted me to see. As I see, I was looking at it. Oh, somebody was in the office with me. But I said, okay. And then, first of all, I noticed three young boys, teenagers, came in. And they went into the bathroom, the male bathroom. It's natural. Sometimes I'm here, and they will come say, can I use your bathroom? And I said, go. So the three boys, I saw, okay, maybe they want to urinate. So they went in. After a while, 
two young girls of their age bracket came in. So then something happened. One girl went out. Two boys came out of the bathroom. So how many boys and how many girls do I have left? I have one boy, one girl. And this girl that came in entered the male bedroom. At that point, I said, no, I can't sit in the office. So I rushed into the bathroom. Bam, bam, bam. By the time I got there, they have locked the door. They've locked the door. Please listen. They've locked the door. So some of the boys, the ones that, the, the friend, the accomplice in iniquity. One of them was bold enough to tell me they want to sleep with each other. Yeah. So, and by the time the boy will come out, it was just as short as this girl, as short as it, but the whole of her breast was outside. I was moved in my heart. Then I asked one of them, are you a Christian? He said, I'm a Christian. And you know what he said to me? He said, let me pray for you. <laughs> and I told him, and I said, pray for me. And he held my hand, may the Lord bless you. The Lord bless the church, the Lord did one. And I asked that, you were raised by the, with the Bible. I just wanted to be sure. He prayed well. So here this morning, I'm speaking on what I call wanted teaching parents. Wanted. What, what is God looking for? Teaching parents. You know, I said to myself, if that had happened, in my place of birth, I won't allow them to go. I will lock them in and I will beat them. Yeah. <laughs> but I may eventually go to jail if I try that. Yeah. Because it will be turned to kidnapping. It will be turned to kidnapping. So I'm speaking on what I call wanted teaching parents. We read this morning from Psalm number 127. Psalm number 127. Psalm 127. And I read a few verses. Verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is its reward. Please mind the scriptures. Read, it, read very well. Verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are the children of what? Of the youth. Verse 5. Happy is that man that art his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm going to read the first verse, and then I'll jump to verse 5 to 9. So now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgment which I teach you. For to do them that ye may do what? Leave and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your father giveth you. Verse 5. Behold, Moses speaking said, I have taught you statutes and judgments even as the Lord my God commanded me 
that you should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For what? This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all the statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. They, are, they did not become wise or understanding people by their own self. It was because they have access to divine instruction. Verse 7. For what a nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him. And, that, and what nation is there so great that has status and judgment so righteous as all this law which I said before you this day. Verse 9. If you are with there, can you read them? Verse 9 with me. Let's go. Teach them thy son and thy son's sons. But what should you do? Teach them thy son and thy son's son. Teach. Teach them thy son and thy son's son. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Open your Bible, you will read 6 and verse 15. If you're in Proverbs 6, Proverbs 22, verse 6, say amen. amen. Okay, then let's say, let's go. What did it say? Train on the child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Verse 15. Foolishness. Foolishness is locking in the heart of a child. But God has a recommendation for foolishness. He calls it what? The rod of correction. Proverbs 23, verses 13 and 14. If you are there, say amen. amen. Okay, let's read. Let's go. With all not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with rod, he shall not die. And verse 14, and thou shalt beat him with rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Proverbs 29, 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15. Proverbs 29, verse 15. If you are there, say amen. Okay, once you let's go, the raw and reprove. Give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. No one under my voice would have to cover his or her face because of her children. Amen. Let your amen be louder than that. Amen. Listen very well. God is a family man. What did I say? God is a family man. In same Genesis chapter 12 that God spoke to Abraham about his call and the platform is, is given him. In that same particular chapter, God, verse 7, God started speaking about his seed. His seed. God spoke about his seed. God's throne is in heaven. But the scripture said he gave the earth to man. That's why you won't find an angel preaching. He has no authority here. You won't find an angel sharing tracts. That's one he gave to man. And can I say something? Man is still God's vessel for the earth is God's instrument 
of work on this planet. And one thing is this. God, because he created the, the earth, he has a plan for the earth. And whenever God has a plan to fulfill on earth, God looks for a man. And when he looks for a man, you will discover God does not stop with that man because one man is too small for all the program of God. So in order to perpetuate God's agenda, God makes agreement with, you find people, say this family, this is what I'm going to use it for. This family, you, this is what I'm going to use it to do. And you will discover in the scripture that some specific offices before now, before the, in Old Testament, God deliberately perpetuated them. Number one, the priesthood. You can't become a priest because you like to be. God perpetuated his agenda using the family line. Even royalty, you will discover. God does what? He perpetuates. He perpetuates. Why? If he has started it with one man, so that there will be continuity, he begins to run that program through the child. Say, prepare your child, it's going to take over from you. Can I say something here? Um, if your parents took you to church, can I say your hands up? You went to church. Your parents, somebody in your family took you to church. Amen. Can you see that? Majority of the people in this place now, in this service now, somebody took you to church. Somebody held you and took you to church. <laughs> um, you know one thing I want to pray for you? That which your parents gave you will not get lost in your hand. Yeah. So how many people here you want your children to still keep on serving God after you are gone? You want it? Let me say this to you. It won't happen by chance. It's a reality. If you didn't think about it before, if, can I say something? If you have not been praying for their salvation before, I beg you, don't assume. Start now. Pray intentionally. The Lord, I'm not asking for money. I'm asking for their souls. Because some of the things that gives us joy, that thank God is doing well, is doing that one, everything will perish here. A young friend of mine said something to me and it gladdened my soul. Said he wanted to date a girl, a young girl. This, my friend, has done very well. But the first day he invited the girl out, the girl asked him a question. He didn't ask him how much was the salary. He said, what is your work with God? How are you? Are you working with God? The guy was shocked. But despite all the things that should make this one to fall headlong, she was not interested. The only question he asked them, what is your position in Christ? What do you, what is, where is your place in God? Do you have an address in God? Or you lack an address? Whether you agree with me or not, your faith is built on a foundation laid for you by somebody. So if the people God has committed into your hand will follow suit, you must defend that foundation.
How does God achieve godly parenting? God's instrument of perpetuating himself in a family line is teaching. Teach. Keep on teaching. 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 Not at a old age but at the very beginning keep on teaching give attention to teaching you know i'm praying for one thing that god gave me long life not because i want to eat good food or because to be alone i'm only praying that god will give me long life and good health so that i can teach my children's children not because of anything only one thing God, one thing you gave me, it is your knowledge. I want to perpetuate it in such a way that no one can come and erase it. Listen very well. Do you know that the children that left you and said, I'm going to college, after going to college and they returned back home, they begin to challenge some of the things you say. What has happened to them? Somebody stood in front of them and began to write on their mind. It's not writing on their book. It's writing where? On their mind. It's writing on their mind. Writing on their mind. Whether consciously or unconsciously, they are hearing them. And those things they were saying to them begins to make them say, what your dad said, is it true? What your mom said, is it true? But I'm praying, whatever is on assignment to scatter what God has built in your family, heaven shall scatter them. Amen. Let your enemy be louder than that. Amen. Not some things notice things number one bearing children is not man's idea it was not man that said i want children it was god's commandment and god commanded them be fruitful can i say something to you anyone in this service and the devil is telling you can you have a child is a lie it is not your idea. God commanded you to. So all the voices raging in the spirit against your increase, they are buried here today. Amen. So bearing children is not man's idea. And because it's not man's idea, you can't raise them by human idea. I'm going to repeat that again. Bearing children is not, it didn't start with Adam and Eve. It was a commandment from God be fruitful and multiply. It was God that said it. So if it was God's idea and it must be raised the way God wanted it. They must be raised according to God's manual. You can't buy an iPhone and you are reading the manual of Samsung. You will destroy the phone. Oh, you bought a Mercedes and you gathered the manual for driving a B2. You destroy, you won't maximize it. So there is a manual for reason, and that manual is this book. It's this book, no elder book. Because they started, everything about them started from here. Number two, your parenting responsibility goes beyond your biological children. 
you have not been raised to teach your children alone. God raised you to teach every young person in their sphere of influence. For example, if you are here and it was your parent that taught you to write ABC, raise up your hand. You didn't go to school. So there are other people who were involved in your making. Same way God expected of you to be diligently involved in the making of others. Somebody sat down to teach you what you know today. So you too, you have been given life so that you can raise others for God. Can I say something? You owe the coming generation the knowledge that has shaped you positively. So you are a debtor. What are you? A debtor. You owe. No, if you say, my ching, you are myopic. If you want to see your crap correctly, your children are more than those who came out of you. Number three thing I want you to note here this morning. More than often, a man who does not know sees parenting as a status. He sees that what? A status. And that's why you can see a man who does not know anything. You just say, my baby mama. I have four babies. My baby mama one, baby mama two, baby mama two. Baby mama. He does not know. So that's why he call. He doesn't know the meaning. He does not understand. He does not know. He does not know. He does not know. So, parenting goes beyond just I'm a daddy. I'm a mommy. No, 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 no. Did you know what the God Bible called them? The scripture likened them to arrows. Is that not what the scripture calls them? Say, as arrows, like as arrows in the hands of a mighty man. So are the children of you. Let me ask a question. If you are sleeping, say amen. Okay. <laughs> Can I say something? The devil won't want you to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> so we get a lot. <laughs> the scripture liking them to what? Arrows. Arrows, are they medical equipment? What are they? Eh? Weapon of war? Weapon of war. An arrow is not an equipment. It's not a toy. And God looked at children and said, these ones are arrows. They are what? Arrows! Arrows. An arrow is not a medical equipment. You know one thing? The arrow has the capacity to cover long range. When you throw a stone, you are limited. When you shoot an arrow, how far can you go? You go farther. So when God sees a child, God is seeing a long range project. It's because this one is for a long thing. It's, not, it's a long range investment. And God packaged things inside of him. It's going to cover things for long. God sees it as something designed for a serious long range project. If I bring an arrow now, and as I'm standing in front of you, I say, and I'm bent on releasing it. And you say, Pastor, you love me. Oh. <laughs> Pastor, you love me. So what are we then saying? An arrow must be guided. If unguided, it can become result in tragedy. What must you do with an arrow? <laughs> what must you do with an arrow? I see one of my friends is sleeping. Wake up. 
<laughs> you have a child, you wake up. <laughs> An arrow must be guided. An arrow must be guided. And why did God use them as an arrow? God has an enemy. And who is his enemy? The devil. And when Jesus came, what did the Bible say that they would do to the serpent? Say, he shall bruise the head of the serpent. So every child is designed to bruise the head of the serpent. Amen. Every child. Amen. God packaged inside of him, go out and push the devil to shape. But if not guided, the arrow befriends what God sent him to destroy. When you get home, take out time to read that Psalm 127 verse. Read the letter. He said, Happy is the man which has his quiver full of them. But did you see that he didn't say whether he's a good man or a bad man? He just said what? Happy is the man. That is anyone that has the young people in his pocket is at advantage. Is at advantage. Is the person is at advantage. Anyone who has young children in his pocket is at advantage. He can do what older people can't achieve. Can do. Do what older people can achieve. But can I say another thing about arrows? Arrows left unattended to. The enemy will take it. And then he uses it and fire the person that was meant to keep it. I'm going to pray now. Any power on assignment to turn your children to an arrow in your heart. You know that there are many who have arrows in their heart. It is their arrow, they, this is their own arrow, only that it got into a wrong hand and the person then, the enemy fired it back into their heart. Whatever is on assignment to make your children turn and they turn and become a serious arrow in your heart. In as much as God live and the spirit live it, let God destroy them. Amen. Let your amen be louder than that. Amen. Let your amen thunder. Amen. So, 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 so what the Bible says, so, so, happy is the man. The heart is quiver full of them said they shall not be ashamed when they speak with the enemy at the gates. But if that arrow is already in the hand of the enemy, it then becomes an arrow in the heart. So it's today is a day of praying, serious praying. Of all of us who are going to pray, if particularly if you love this generation, we are going to pray. Listen very well. It took only one Eli to rewrite the story of the priesthood of Aaron's family. Not two. Only one Eli. It was one Eli. Only one Eli. How many Eli? One. one not two. Everything that has been built by generations before, at the turn of Aaron, God changed his mind. God said to him, I have said to your father's house that I will give the office of priesthood is from generation to generation. You know what God said? He said, but now, far be it from me. Oh my God. God said what? Far be it. So that order has changed. No more. Just because of one man. I'm praying again for you. The faith that your parents gave you, the platform to know God that your parents gave you, it shall not die in your hand. Amen. It shall not die in your hand. Amen. 
Number five thing I would like to say is that the advantage Israel has over all nations of the earth was just one. And that advantage was that God told him, Israel, the requirement to have a colorful life and destiny. God gave them his manual. So if you want to run life well, he gave them his word. What did he do? What did God give them? Israel. Say it loud and clear. Israel. What did God give Israel? Israel? He gave them his word, Israel. But can I say something to you? Do you know that all the constitutions of the leading nations of the world, they are tied to this book? All the constitutions, whether they agree or not, their constitutions came out of this book. All the constitutions. How many people here, you know a man of God called T.L. Osborne, he has gone to be with the Lord. You know T.L. Osborne? T.L. Osborne visited a country, a nation out of this land, and the president of the country met with him and said, Oh, God bless you. And the man opened his mouth and said to T.L. Osborne, Say, Thank God for the great leaders of America. Then T.L. Osborne said, You didn't know the fact. So you should have said, Thank God for the great pastors in America. And he said, The pastors were the one that framed the mind of the leaders using God's word. That was why they, they had their root in the church. And that was why they have to live according to the Bible. They ruled with God's mentality. So don't say America is great because America had great leaders. Great teachers. Church teachers, not school teachers was what produced great American leaders. So, what are the syllables? God asks for godly parenting. Number one thing, he said, teaching. And we read that from Deuteronomy chapter 4. He said, thou shalt teach thy son and thy son's son. Teach them teach them let me start with that but do you agree with me you can't teach what you don't know if I ask a question I'm not going to tell anybody but from the depth of your heart since last Sunday ask yourself did you open the Bible Remember, I mean, and you opened it. Praise God. Amen. You know that opening of the Bible you are doing is not for you alone. It will it frames your mind. It conditions how you do your things. And how you do your things actually. Is what your children learn from you. Children only learn what they see you doing more than what you say. If I come home now and say, you are a child of God, don't lie, don't lie. But I'm on the phone at home. And somebody asks me, Kyle, where are you? Say, I'm in front of Times Square. <laughs> And my son is looking. When did our living room become Times Square? Our living room, Times Square. And the boy came to you. Thank God if you have young children. If you have an adult, he may not talk. He just, mm, daddy, just walk away. But if it's a young, if it's a young boy, say, Thank God for American children. Say, Dad, when did Paolo the living room become Times Square? 
So keep quiet, keep quiet. <laughs> Actually, children only do what they say. You know one thing, a friend of mine, one young friend of mine came looking at me, came talking to me one day. Say, Pastor, she didn't want to come to church, so I went to talk to her. Say, my dear, why didn't you want to come to church? Said, I'm discouraged. Said, why? Say, a lot of people in church are hypocrites. Yeah, she's my young friend. You know, I like them. She opened up, said, a lot of them are hypocrites. Their life and what they are saying does not gel. So they are confusing me. Yeah. I can't stand before you now, and when I'm greeting you, I'm laughing. But when I get home and I'm talking about you, and the children are hearing it, say, wow, which kind of religion? Is it Christianity or another thing? And can I tell you one thing? This same one reason is the reason why many children left church. So all of us need repentance. But Lord, if I have been blowing uncertain sound, you know what they call it, uncertain sound? In time of old, when, please let your phone. If, if in time of old, when you, there is a kind of trumpet you blow, when a sound you blow when there is war there is one you blow when the army came home with victory there is a there are different type of sound you make and get, get people a lot but when you are blowing the sound of war in the time of in the time of peace and the time of peace you are blowing the sound of war then the children are saying which one should we believe now confusion Let's see something in Acts of Apostle chapter 1 that will help us. Acts of Apostle chapter 1, verse 1. Acts of Apostle chapter 1, verse 1. If you are there, say amen. amen. Acts of Apostle chapter 1, verse 1. 1, 2, let's go. Can I say something? Did you see that doing precede teaching? What does I say? Doing. Precede what? Teaching. Doing must what? Precede teaching. You can't tell a child they said we should fast. And everybody in this house is fasting. But the child came out of the bathroom at the middle of the night. And then saw daddy in the front of the leakage. So is this another type of fasting? Inside God's syllabus too is training. You remember we read from Proverbs said train a child the way it should go. So training involves not only impacting knowledge but the practicalization of what you are teaching. Practical aspect of it. Oh, God said we should love our brethren. And we're coming from church, we could see another brethren walking. And instead of stopping by the person and say, Sister, you are going to church, or how far can I take you? I turned it to praise worship song. And the child is saying, Look at Auntie, Auntie from the church, say, Let us go. Let us go. 
and they've taught the child in our class, you love, love shares. Say, mommy, let us share the car. Say, not for now, I'm in a hurry. And every time it is what? I'm in a hurry. So training has to do with on, uh, hands on practice. You put your hands on. Hands on experience. God's silver boss include instructions. Instruction is a rule. And can I say something? Write this down if you are not writing, if you are writing. Wherever instruction is missing, destruction is inevitable. What did I say? I'm going to say it again loud again. Wherever instruction is missing, the instruction is what? Inevitable. And can I say the problem of this particular age is the we have come to a phase of man history where every man wants to do what he likes. Every man wants to do what? What he likes. Nobody can talk. Every man wants to do what? What he likes. This is what I like. This is what I just like. This is what I like. And when you say what you are saying is not right, say, you are trying to make me feel small. And sometimes we say you are discriminating against me. Can I say something? Many can't take instruction in a free environment. That's why they gather them together in jail to learn instruction. Just stop by the stoplight, say no, people like me, nobody tells me what to do. You can't tell me when I, I stop when I want to stop. Nobody, no, 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 I'm the owner of this car. You can't tell me when to apply my brake. I stop when I feel like stopping. And then the government says, since you don't know how to stop, we will take you to a place where they will stop you. <laughs> no, none of your seed will know the door of jail. <laughs> Let your enemy be loud and clear. It, the reason why the jail is full is because some can't take instruction. You are always right. And can I say something to you, even as an adult? If you don't have any man in your life that can tell you sit down, and you sit down, you are already an accident waiting to happen. If you, no matter who you are, if you don't have anyone in your life that can look at you and say, cow, they sit down there. And you sit without murmuring. So they said I should sit, I can't stand. If you don't have any, you can't teach children to, to take instruction. Because what you don't have, you can't give. What you don't have, you can't give. And can I say something to you? If you are going to leave your children to school to raise them for you, ah, <laughs> please, ma, please don't try it. Don't try it. Instruction. It is instruction. Instruction. Someone had said, uh, we walk 
We, can, we crawl by common sense. We walk by training. But to fly, you need instruction. That's why when you go to a flying school, they don't call them teachers. What do they call them? Flying instructors. Because you don't choose the button you want to press in the aircraft. Say, so this color, this one is one you, one you must press now. You don't say, I don't like the color. This color does not look, I'm, it's not my favorite color. Say, so if the plane must take off now, what should you do? This is the button. Say, so I don't like the color of that car. Mm. And you say you want to be a commercial pilot. Brad Nelson, is that how you were taught? <laughs> He's a pilot. So there are things you do, it's just instruction. When you get there, you press this button. For landing, this is what you must pull. To change your direction, this is what one. Instruction. 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 Number three. We number what are we? Number four. Okay. Commandments. Look at Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Look at God's dealing. So that's why, look at this place very well. So that when we are praying, oh God, my children shall not serve their enemy, shall not serve, they shall be the head and not the tail. We can know the requirement, what is required. Look at it. Genesis 18. Are you there? Yes. We are going to read verses 17 to 19. Okay, one, two, let's go. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Obeying commandment is what makes you fit for fulfilling God's promise. Did you read that line very well? God said, I know he will command them. And as they obey that commandment, then I will be able to do that which I promised Abraham. Did you know that it's possible to have God's promise over a man's life, but the man is not fit for fulfillment? God wants to do it. But when God looks at him, say, ah, if I fulfill this commandment, I will be violating myself. I will be violating my own righteousness. You know one thing I tell my children? You want to write an exam, go and read. And when I read, I say, I should pray for you. Say, Daddy, pray. I have only one question. Is there anything in this book you are praying that the teacher must not ask? If you say, I say, no, I won't pray. Why? I won't pray that God should put a man who has not read well above a man who has read well. It will violate God's righteousness. After you have read, then we'll pray for divine advantage. Then God answers. And the last one, but not the least, or not exhausted, let me just for this purpose, is what the Bible calls discipline. Correction. And that place where the Bible talks about the rod, the Bible was talking about what? Discipline. Discipline. A child has not finished his assignment and is holding a remote control to watch TV. No, 
is not possible. He has not finished your assignment. Oh, your teacher reported you that you gave him or I a big mouth in class and you are saying you want to buy a Nike shoe. Nike what? <laughs> Why reward failure in character? Okay, they told you don't fight, you fought, and you came home. Say, Mommy, cook my delicious food. And you ran into the kitchen and you began to cook it. What you have just done is to tell the child, What you have done is normal. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. There is a scarcity now. Is the scarcity of parents who are sitting down to teach their children. I have a sister here who is in the, who teaches. She told me children who are who will not bring pencil or any reading equipment materials to school wearing shoes of five hundred dollars. It one thousand dollars. And tell the ch child, where is your notebook I don't have? Who is sponsoring such a child? Who is doing that? Who? A child who is not passing has a phone of over a thousand dollars. Who is doing such a thing? None of us will do bad business. Yeah. Close your eyes. And let us talk to God. Let us talk to God. We all need help. All of us. All of us need help. All of us need help. And God is sufficient for us. God is sufficient for us. God is sufficient for us. Tell God, I recognize you have given me a responsibility. Don't let me fail. And let us talk to God in ways where I've been failing. Lord, forgive me. Come and help me. And for those children that have already graduated, they have left the home, tell God, there is nothing you cannot do. Come and help me. 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 And if you are here this morning, the devil is trying to use a strategy to corner those children from your hand. Wherever they are, begin to speak God's word over their life, that they belong to God. <laughs> the devil, you cannot address them. You can't. Talk to God. 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 Tell God, pardon my mistakes. Pardon the mistakes I've made. But come true for come and help me. Pardon my mistake. Pardon my mistakes. Pardon my mistakes. Pardon my mistake. Pardon my mistakes. Pardon my mistakes and begin to tell God, I'm going to raise them for you. They are your own. You only give them to me to watch over them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Let's rise up on our feet. And if you are a child, you are listening to me. I want to beg you. Be very conscious of the fact that the spirit of your parents must bless you. Even though they, they didn't say it. Their spirit must do what? Must bless you. Honor thy father and thy mother. <laughs> so that your days might be long and that it might be well with you. It, God says that, said it. And God didn't tell you whether they are educated or not. He just tell you, honor them. He didn't tell you the condition. Say, this one, honor. You know, it's easier to give money than to give honor. Actually, honor is when the person is wrong. And then you look at it and say, ah, what did they do? But I can't react. You are a tall person and your dad gave you a slap. And something is saying, move your hand. Say, no way. I can't move my hand. That is a no-go area. So that what you did hurt me and then you cried and you went. But your father will still come back and tell you, come back. It is for your good. Honor that it might be well. So if you are failing in the honor test as a child, tell God, forgive me. Because everything a man does is seed sowing. You will not sow a bad seed. Amen. Everything a man does is seed sowing. None of us will sow what when we see the harvest in the future. Say, ah, and this was how I was behaving. I had a friend while I was in Amsterdam. She started pursuing boys at the age of 13. By the age of 13, his son started bringing girls home. Then she started crying. But this was the age I started. None of us will reap evil harvest. But if you are here this morning, you are not born again. The first thing to do is to reconcile. Go wherever you are, lay your right hand on your chest and tell God, come and save my soul. Don't let me go like other men. Don't leave me to myself. Be sincere with God. Tell God, save me. Save me so that I may serve you. Save my soul. Talk to God. 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 Lord, breathe upon our hearts. Everyone that is telling you, God, come and help me. Breathe upon our hearts. And make a new man out of every man under my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Number one thing to do, if you are a parent, wherever you are, just begin to mention your children one by one. Say, God, I hand him over to you. If your children are still in your womb, lay your hand on your womb and tell God, every child from this place, every child from my womb, I hand them over to you. It is, don't say I'm too young to pray. You can pray into your future. Tell God, I hand them over. They are your own, not mine. They are, going, they are going to serve you, not me. They are going to serve you, not me. They are going to, it is you they will serve, not me. It's you they are going to honor, not me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You know, one thing I want to beg you, Raise those children to love the Lord. If they love the Lord, you will enjoy them. There's one of my sisters, she's looking at me now. One day she came to church, she was, she has, all her children, they are always here on Wednesday for piano lesson. And I woke up, I said, I want to thank you for this sacrifice. You will live, not that there was no money to make, you will bring them and sit with them 
And those children will be learning the piano, three of them. And I told her, in Jesus' name, you shall eat the fruit of your labor. I said, Pastor, you are thanking me. I said, I know why I'm thanking you. Because you are planting seeds. Seeds that will keep on bearing fruit after you are gone. All of us, we are going to cry to God. Say this one loud and clear. Say power! On assignment. To turn my children to arrows in my heart. Uh -huh. They have become arrows in the heart instead of becoming arrows in our hand. No, no, no. That is not what God said. Here today, everyone is going to change it. Say, so any, power any power on assignment to turn my children to arrows in my heart. You are a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. A young man got an internship in one very one of the major companies in this country and said, Pastor, you are not excited. I said that doesn't move me. It does not take time for the devil to scatter Ivy League certificates. What moves me about you is you standing in God's presence, not the amount of money you have. The devil can set up a man with money and use that money to walk him into prison. What is the essence of the money? Say this one with everything inside of you. Say the lions of this land. The lions of this land. So from today, stop calling your children American children. They are children of God. Like that. They leave them the American child. They're, 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 stop, don't use that word. They belong to God. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how he's behaving like that. It's American child. American child will bring American shame. None of us will suffer shame. Yeah. So, the lions of this land shall not swallow my children. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and talk to God. You shall not swallow my children. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You shall not swallow my children. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this one loud and clear. Say powers on assignment to turn my children upside down. Shout it like a warrior. Die! Open your mouth and declare it. Let them die. Oh, yes. Die in the name of Jesus. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Please bring your about your Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. We have two more. Two more. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 2. So that we'll pray with the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2. Rise up, stand, standing on your feet, standing on your feet. You're going to see something there. Are you in Ephesians chapter 2? Yes. Ephesians chapter 2, you can see it on the screen. Look at what Paul was opening a mystery to some people. Say, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So there is a spirit 
call the spirit of this power of the air. It's that spirit that makes them to do what they don't want to do. Say this one loud and clear. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your... It makes them to walk according to the course of this world, not according to God's plan for them. They walk the way the world wants them to walk. Mention your children one by one and pray. Say, you the spirit. You the spirit. Shout it louder of the prince of the power of the air. Of the prince of the power of the air. Operating in any department of my children's life. I bind you. I cast you out. I bind you. I cast you out. I bind you. I cast you out. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Bind them. Oh yes, bind them. Oh yes, I bind you, my Lord, last life. I bind you, my Lord, life. The spirit of this age. Oh yes, you're present in your lives. I bind you. In the name of Jesus. All the children that God has handed over to me. I break your power over their lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Yes. Open your mouth. Oh, yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. You are going to confess that. Isaiah 8, verse 18. And I want you to shout it loud, and because that is our last prayer point. Isaiah 8, verse 18. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are still looking for it, say wait for me. Isaiah 8, verse 18. Isaiah 8. Are you there? Yes. Okay. One, two, let's go. Behold. I and children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord, those which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Now, put down your Bible and cry in from your spirit. Cry. Mentioning their names. Cry from out of your spirit. Say, I. I. <laughs> and the children. That God has given me are uh, for signs and wonders. Shout it louder than that. Oh, yes. Shout it louder than that. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, Nama Pala Pelante Yaba. Oh yes, we have a sign that for wonders. Nekayad nele kotoro, minana lebotenda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Leko nama faname kopo la bekote. Oh yes. Oh yes, Lord. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that I. And all the children that God has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I say something? Don't leave the steering wheel of your children's life to strangers. Let your hand be on that wheel in the Spirit. Telling God, you gave them to me to watch over them for you and tell them this is where they are going. They are going to serve the Lord. They are going to serve the Lord. More than me, better than me. They are going to serve the Lord. They are going to serve the Lord. They are going to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. And I declare over you and every seed that will come out of you 
none of your seed shall give you shame. Any power on assignment to turn your children to a source of tears. In as much as God live and the spirit live by the reason of God's hand upon this spirit in this morning, that agenda let it backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Whatever makes a man to bury his head in shame and saying, I cannot say it openly that he is my son. I cannot declare that is my daughter. I'm ashamed to say it. In as much as God live and the spirit live, it, it shall not be your portion. The jealousy of the Lord shall defend you and your children. It shall be well with you. Every child that has contact with you, not only your biological children, any child that comes under your supervision, none of them shall get lost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And your loudest, Amen. Please be seated. Quickly bring out your title and offering as a gift to God. Bring out your title and offering. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we we'll thank you especially for your grace upon our lives. Thank you because what you have given us money cannot buy it. So that's why what you have brought, actually you put it in our hands. Accept us and accept our offering. Amen. Use it for your praise and glory. Amen. And Lord, I pray, every hand given, and every hand that is saying, I want to give, but there is power. Lord, you will multiply all of us. Amen. Thank you, King of Glory. You, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And your loudest, amen. amen. And a glorious, amen. 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 I was told that some of us, because we don't, because we bring our offering forward, a lot of people forget to give their offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm reminding you today, after the service, dance forward, the choir will be singing. Dance forward and bring your offering before the Lord. After we share the grace, the choir will sing for a few minutes so that you dance forward and you bring your offering unto the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there anyone fellowship with us for the first time? Today is your very first day here. Wherever you are, just raise up your right hand. Oh, praise the Lord. Lord. This is the first time. The Lord, Lord, the Lord, 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 Please rise up on your feet as we pray for you. If this is your first time, just rise up. Amen. Please, church, can you please stretch forth your hand and begin to bless them? Bless them. Bless them in the name of the Lord. The Lord shine his eyes upon you. His blessing overshadow you. And his goodness rest upon you. Let God do with you what he has not done before in your family. Make you his own. Establish you in his presence. And cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate your presence. May the Lord concentrate his grace upon you and keep you to the end. Looking forward to seeing you more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Frank Oriaki, please see me before this, after the service. Are you a Jai? See me after the service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With your own mouth, begin to paint the picture of this week. 
paint it colorfully. That is decree what this week is going to deliver with your own mouth. Decree. Decree it. Decree it. Lift up your voices. Don't be, don't, be, don't be stingy over your life. Speak powerfully. It's going to favor me. The week is the week of outstanding help from heaven. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Oh yes. God promised me goodness and mercy. And that is what will follow me. It will follow me. His mighty hand is on my side. And his power will not leave me. Nesota Lambe Koto. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It is written that you today shall lift up your head from whence come at your help. Amen. Let your amen be dynamic. Amen. Let it be super dynamic. Amen. Your help coming from the Lord. Amen. He will not suffer your feet to be moved. Amen. The only that keep it you will not slumber. Amen. The only that keep it your ease shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Amen. It's your shade upon your right hand. Amen. The sun shall not smite you by day, Amen. nor the moon by night. Amen. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Amen. He shall preserve your soul. Amen. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming Amen. in. From this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I'm praying specifically, any stranger that has entered into the life of your children, to confuse them and drag them away from the shadow of the Almighty. This very hour, let the arrangement be broken. Amen. I separate your seed from strangers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You have known their birthday. You shall not know their death day. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God shall be jealous over your family. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And your loudest, amen. Amen. And a glorious, amen. Amen. And you and your children, you are for signs and wonders, amen. Amen. In Jesus' name you are blessed. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, all the days of our lives. I want to beg you, this message is on our YouTube channel. Listen to it again. And if you love some of your people you love, share it with them. Tell them. No man has achieved anything if his seed is not greater than him. No man has achieved anything if his own seed is not what? Greater than him. Abraham was blessed, God's great. Uh, Isaac was very great. By the time he got to Jacob, exceedingly great. That is it. That is God's pattern. It must be, they must be greater than you. Sound thunder, hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him.